Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell to be notified when I upload a new video. So today I have somewhat of an interesting video topic. It's been something that I've been wanting to talk about for a long time and I just hadn't felt ready. But my intention for sharing this video with you today is that hopefully it will help one of you. And if it just helps one person, then that is just enough for me. So this is a video on my own experience of disappointing my Indian parents. And so when I was growing up, everyone around me was a doctor. And everyone who I knew was going to become a doctor. And so naturally, I thought that's what I used to do because it's like the sheep following the sheep. You just follow the crowd, right? And so when anyone would ask me, what do you want to be when you grow up? I would say a doctor. And then they'd say like, what kind of doctor? And I was like, well, I don't know what kind of doctor. So I like went and researched and I was like, ooh, this would be interesting. So like a pediatric oncologist. And that's kind of was my story. That was going to be the thing I was going to do when I grew up. And so when I got to college, naturally, I picked my major to be pre-med and biology as anyone who wanted to become a doctor would pick. I didn't necessarily know if that's what I wanted to do or didn't want to do. I just knew that was all I knew and that was the only option I had to choose from. But I always knew for sure that I wanted to help people. Like that was the one thing that made me so excited was to help people. And so I thought a doctor was the perfect way to help people because they save lives. So I get to help people. But when I got into college, it was a little bit of a different story because I wasn't enjoying my science classes, chemistry, biology, anatomy, physics, and not even math. I am not a right-brained person. I'm more of a left brain. I got that mixed up, I'm sorry. But I'm more creative. I'm more um, kind of language oriented. I am not numbers oriented. And so I wasn't enjoying any of those classes and I was doing poorly in them. But the classes I was enjoying were my humanities and English and liberal arts classes like political science. Those I had no problem getting A's in, but my science classes, ugh, it was such a struggle. And I was not liking the process. I didn't actually like one of those classes. I kind of dreaded going to those classes. I dreaded taking tests. It was just not fun for me. And so... I really kind of started to ask myself like, hmm, why am I not enjoying this? Like, I probably should be enjoying this if this is going to be my career, if this is gonna be what I'm gonna do for work because I'm, it's gonna be a lot of this. And so I realized like, I'm not enjoying it and I need to do something about it. But I had a lot of fear to do something about it because my parents wanted me to be a doctor. I am their firstborn child. My parents are also an immigrant to this country and they moved to this country so they could give me and my siblings a better life. And so I felt this immense amount of pressure to please them and to basically not disappoint them and to honor their expectations of me, which was to become a doctor. And so I just was in this inner conflict with myself, but I just knew something didn't feel right about this. Like I had to, I had to deal with it. And so I ultimately decided to deal with it um, my sophomore year in college and I remember it was winter break and I was home from school and I had this conversation with my dad and I think my whole family was sitting there and I just kind of said I don't want to be a doctor anymore I don't want to do this anymore and my dad literally just silent and I just was like my heart was pounding and I just was like so uncomfortable and here I was going to go say this to him and I didn't know what I was going to do. And I think that's what made it worse. So he wanted me to, he asked me, like, what is it that you want to do instead? And I was like, I have no idea. I just knew that I wanted to help people. And I think that was the lowest blow of my life, at least in my teenage years, because the words that my dad said to me was that you broke my dreams. And I kind of looked at him and I was like, yeah, you're right. I did break your dreams because they were not my dreams. And I have no idea where I got the courage to say that. But it kind of lifted so much pressure off of me. And it really just freed me up to go explore what it is that I wanted to do. But I think the thing that ultimately ended up hurting me the most was this burden or this heaviness that I was carrying that 
I disappointed my parents, like that guilt of disappointing them, that guilt of not living up to their expectation of, of me becoming a doctor. And this is where this video comes in because we all have things that we're expected to do, especially from our family, our loved ones. They expect us to live a certain way. They expect us to make certain choices. They expect us to be in these careers. But sometimes our own desires do not match up with what is expected of us. And this often leads to disappointments. So wherever there is expectations, there's always going to be disappointment. That's like the bottom rule. And it's coming back and realizing what is my truth here? What is it that I really, really want to do? And so this is how I kind of move through this. I kind of had to ask myself that if I actually went and did this, if I just became a doctor solely for my mom and my dad, and I put my own desire, my own truth on the line, would I be happy? And I was like, no, because I have to live with the consequences of my decision. Not my mom, not my dad. At the end of the day, I can make a decision under the influence of somebody else or to make somebody else happy, but I have to live with the consequences of that decision. And that was not okay with me. I had to live with the consequences of the decision. And I knew that that would not be okay with me. And so if I were to go wrong or something would happen, I would then blame myself. I wouldn't have to blame somebody else because I made that decision. So that was a very clear cut for me. And that kind of gave me the courage to go ahead and make this decision and say, no dad, I'm not gonna become a doctor. So if you're someone who's watched this video and if you're of Southeast Asian descent, Indian, then you kind of can relate to my story because I think our culture has a high expectations at least our parents put high expectations of the career path we can choose. And so it was either going to be a lawyer, a doctor, an engineer. And so that's all we're given. At least I think it's more common for Indian people living abroad. If you're an Indian person living in India, I feel like it's a different ballgame for you. It's for some reason it's Indians who have migrated to, you know, Europe or America or Canada. They have this like intense need to preserve their culture, preserve their heritage. So they're super controlling or have high expectations of their children because they're just, they're, they're so afraid to lose touch with their roots. But I feel like if you're living in India, I don't know if it's the same way there because I don't live there anymore. But I just feel like I've just noticed that from my own experience, it's always parents who move their kids to another country. They try so hard to preserve the culture and they have these incredible high expectations of how the children should live and work and who they should be in the world. And so my point is that if you're going through something like this, you have to understand that people are going to be disappointed by your decisions, by your choices. They will be, especially those people who have high expectations of you because expectations lead to disappointment. And expectations are kind of this, um, well, I like to call it this chain. It's like this chain you have around you and you're kind of suffocating in it and you want to break free. And you're afraid to break free because you're afraid to disappoint people. But my takeaway for you is that you have to live with the consequences of your decisions, no one else. And if you can do that for yourself, know that at the end of the day, no matter what happens, I won't have to resent somebody else. I won't have to blame somebody else for the way my life turned around, that I'm only responsible for that. It's a huge, huge relief because then you don't have to live with resentment or frustration or blame, which is really heavy, toxic emotions to carry. We will all at some point in our life disappoint someone or the other. And this is going to be a parent or someone who you really, really love. But you have to realize that you are, you are worthy of living your life on your own terms. You are worthy of living the life you want to live. You're worthy and deserving of a life that you love, living life that your own way. And it doesn't matter who doesn't understand it, because at the end of the day, you're not doing it to make someone else happy. You're doing it to make yourself happy. And when you're happy, that is when you can make other people happy. You cannot make someone happy by making someone else happy and then forgetting your own happiness. You're never gonna be able to truly make someone happy that way. Make yourself happy first and then you can make other people happy. It's the same idea that fill your cup up first and then you have more to give to the other people. It's like the same reason in an airplane, you put your 
oxygen mask on first before you can help someone put theirs on first. It's important to fill yourself up first because then you truly can be of more service and of more value and of more source of more happiness for other people. Because if you have nothing to give to yourself, how can you give something to another? You're like running on empty. So if you're in this situation, I honor you. I understand what you're going through. I resonate with you, but I challenge you to live your truth. I challenge you to rise up. I challenge you to honor what is true for you, what is real for you, and stick to it. And how this story has ended for me is fast forward to many, many years later, because I've long been done with college. I work today as a transformational life coach, a teacher of empowerment, and I do the work I love in the world, which is teaching people about the power of transformation, teaching people about the power of their thoughts, their emotions, and how that creates their reality, teaching people the tools and techniques to empower themselves to make positive changes in their life. So I'm actually doing work that I love, which is completely based in helping people, but it is all being true to me. It's all in alignment with my soul and my truth. And I'm so much more happier. And as far as my relationship with my parents goes, it's the best it's ever been in my whole entire life. They've actually come around. They may not understand what I'm doing. They may not technically even support it, but they're actually okay with it. And that is good enough for me. And they know that I am doing something that makes me happy and they see how happy I am. And at the end of the day, your parents just want your happiness. And by you honoring yourself, oh my God, people are gonna respect you so much more, even your own parents. I promise you that. So I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, please give it a like and share this video with someone else who you think needs to hear this message. And wherever you are in the world, have the day you want to have. And I invite you to come on board and have a coaching session with me and see what it's like to work with me and let me help you navigate things in your life so you can make positive changes for yourself. Okay, so I'll see you in the next video. Stay open.